Much of our work in the arrhythmia field is gene discovery, understanding disease pathogenesis through identifying genetic causes for conditions. And this family consented to be part of our research uh, on gene discovery for atrial fibrillation. And therefore, we then analyzed um, their genes using cutting edge uh, genomic technology. We performed whole exome sequencing on the DNA of affected individuals and compared that to other members of the family um, who did not have the disease and looked at the DNA profiles of both affected and unaffected individuals. So using this type of genetic study, we're able to identify some rare genetic variants that affected members in the family carried that unaffected members did not carry. And one of these genetic findings um, was a novel genetic mutation in a gene that is highly expressed in the atrial chambers of the heart. And this particular gene encodes a protein that is involved in um, the structure of the atrial myocardium. And this was a novel mutation that all affected individuals in the family had. This gene had never yet been identified as a cause of any genetic syndrome in humans, um, specifically, of course, not atrial fibrillation. Um, so we then modeled this uh, genetic finding uh, using zebrafish. And very interestingly, the zebrafish that expressed this human mutation developed features consistent with human atrial fibrillation. And we examined the tissue of the atrial myocardium from the zebrafish. And the tissue demonstrated very significant structural defects in the heart muscle of the atrium such that would predict um, the inability uh, to develop normal electrical impulses in the atrial tissue. These findings, together with the genetic observations, were rather conclusive um, in suggesting that we had identified a novel gene in a Canadian family responsible for atrial fibrillation. The impact of these findings, I believe, is significant. And in fact, this type of study is what drives us uh, to perform gene discovery uh, research. Atrial fibrillation is very common. It is a very challenging arrhythmia to control, both with medical therapy and cardiac procedures. Many patients become refractory to medical therapy or develop intolerable side effects. There is an invasive procedure known as catheter ablation, which can be effective in a proportion of individuals, but many individuals recur with their atrial fibrillation following the procedure, and there is a significant risk um, to this procedure. So understanding the genetic basis gives us the opportunity uh, to understand the disease pathology to a greater degree. It also provides us the opportunity to identify a specific protein encoded by that gene that may be a novel drug target um, for novel development of therapies um, to prevent recurrence of this type of arrhythmia. One of our goals now is to understand just how many individuals who suffer from atrial fibrillation have this specific type of genetic defect causing their arrhythmia. The impact there could be large because what we've learned is that in this particular family that has this genetic form of atrial fibrillation, management is very challenging and the invasive procedure of catheter ablation was highly unsuccessful in these patients. And so we would always recommend that individuals who might have this subtype of atrial fibrillation not undergo that risk of a procedure. The greater implications, which will take some time for us to develop in the future, is to try and understand how this genetic defect creates the pathology in the atrium that leads to the arrhythmia. I believe that once we understand this pathophysiology to a greater extent, we can then design novel drug therapies or interventions that may help this form of atrial fibrillation. The translation from gene discovery to clinical translation and um, implementation of novel therapies is always a slow process. Our hope is that we will receive the research funding as needed to pursue this in a very uh, fastidious manner 
and hopefully have some answers in this regard to novel drug development within the next five to ten years. What we have learned about atrial fibrillation in the last ten years, which many of my colleagues and other physicians and certainly lay people are unaware of, is that there is indeed a very strong genetic component to driving this arrhythmia in otherwise healthy individuals. What we have also learned is that there are multiple genes that may be involved and we are now aware of six genes that may cause atrial fibrillation in healthy people should there be genetic defects in those genes. The most recent gene is the gene that we have just identified that causes this atrial specific myopathy of the heart that leads to the arrhythmia. In the future we hope to identify genetic subtypes of the vast majority of atrial fibrillation that humans uh, develop because as noted the efficacy of current medical therapy is not uh, very high. Uh, many of these drugs target um, proteins in the heart that are not directly the cause of the atrial fibrillation. And by understanding the direct cause of the atrial fibrillation, by first identifying the gene and the protein that it encodes, we can then target those specific proteins. So the long-term uh, desire in our field is to develop a more personalized approach to the medical therapy of patients with atrial fibrillation a so-called pharmacogenomic approach where the genetic subtype will give us a greater degree of confidence that the chosen medication um, would be effective in treatment. Well, it's important to recognize that atrial fibrillation can be familial and in fact uh, one in three individuals will tell you of a family history of atrial fibrillation and we are currently um, studying a number of families where atrial fibrillation is prevalent where the gene remains elusive. We have not yet identified the genetic cause. So our future work is to use our cutting-edge genomic technologies to delve into their genome to a greater extent and identify um, their particular genetic causes.